Welcome to the Sirius Security Seminar for um, February 11th, 2009. Today I'm proud to introduce uh, Dr. Mehmet Scheinoglu, who is Director of the Informatics Institute, in fact the founding director of the Informatics Institute at Auburn University. Uh, Dr. Scheinoglu has a long and distinguished career, uh, starting with the, oh, which? Oh, oh, you need. Oh, yes. Has a has a long and distinguished career uh, in. Whoops, I need to figure out where you need to. Okay. A long and distinguished career, uh, starting out with uh, teaching for several years and at his alma mater in his native Turkey before coming to the United States and teaching at Purdue University for a period of time. Uh, then going on to uh, lead computer science at Troy University, and uh, I think a couple of other places in there before taking his current position, uh, uh, just recently starting at Auburn. He's also author of a book on trustworthy computing, which may interest many of you. So anyway, he will talk to us today about uh, techniques for security and privacy uh, risk assessment. Um. I am honored to be here again at Purdue at 10 year intervals. I was here 1989 and 98 and then back again in 10 years at inter uh, back again for a, a conference, I mean a talk uh, as part of the Sirius seminars. Thank you very much to Sirius for inviting me. And uh, before I start, uh, I also thank uh, people at Auburn Montgomery watching me and uh, Vice Chancellor uh, Dr. Warren and, uh, and instructor, my wife Suna Shainal, and hello to them. I can see them from here, which is nice. Uh, the, since this uh, talk will be taped and they will, other people will be able to look at it in the future. What I'll do in this uh, a uh, 15 minute talk, I, I have three compartments in this talk. The first compartment will be uh, just going through the slides, slides and telling you what I have been doing and where it led to with the security meter uh, demo. And I'll do the first part of demo, the, uh, part A and the part B, which is kind of sort of like user oriented preserving privacy. If people want to do this without uh, the analyst or computer program getting involved, what should they do? By the way, there's a strong connection between Purdue and Auburn in the sense, if you don't know, if somebody were asking me what, what, what was Purdue, what was Auburn, it's Auburn University, uh, Montgomery campus we're at, and also Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama. As you know, uh, James Hansen, Professor James Hansen, uh, the, uh, the only book uh, biography of your Purdue hero, Neil Armstrong, uh, was uh, written by uh, Professor James Hansen. So, and if you didn't read the book, it's a great book, so you, you should read it. Anyway, let me just uh, connect with you, uh, you on this topic. And uh, the, the goal is actually how do you quantify risk of security and privacy, the two uh, pillars of the trustworthy computing, and, uh, and also how do you quantify other risks like electronic voting, or echo risk or wireless and things like that. But we'll first start with the most important one uh, of the security uh, domain. Now, why would I do that? Why would somebody uh, do something like this? Uh, first of all, a lot of people are uh, interested in finding out what their privacy uh, or what their security risks are when they sit in front of a computer in the morning. like. Uh, you know, you, all of you, when you connect with your computer in the mo uh, morning, whenever you, you see a temperature, like 81 degrees, that's rare, I know, in, per, but by us, 81, 85, 90, you always see a temperature. And wouldn't you like to see an indicator of how bad or how good your computer software security risk is? So, and uh, not only you see what it is, but would you like to do something about it, you know, self-sufficiently, uh, without going and paying all that money to the nearest uh, company. Anyway, the motivation behind the security model is the quantitative risk me measurements are pervasive, needed to compare alternatives in terms of dollars, 
and in, in the present time, there are no such quantitative and probabilistic measures. Those which, are, which exist work with high, medium, low, and they're not systemically all around. Uh, they are not ready to tell you uh, in a consistent manner. However, uh, those don't like add up multi you know, correctly, and some of them, like attack trees, are so large and in terms of and they go out of uh, bounds. Well, the proposed MATSTAT model is uh, going to do that for you, for us. And it has a security meter probability model, which is in the center. And then you have your constants, and you have your probabilistic inputs. And uh, then you have an output. Uh, well. I'm going to show you how this is done later on in terms of a demo. So my goal is really, since we started around 4, um, 38, 4, 40, it, through the first 15 minutes, these slides just go f as conveniently fast as, as I can, and then go on to the demo. I don't want to have no time, not have any time for the demo. So this is the tree diagram. Uh, you can see that there are vulnerabilities, list of threats for each vulnerability, and then residual risk or, uh, sorry, and then lack of countermeasure or countermeasure for that very threat. For example, you may have network for vulnerability, which is true, and you may have uh, email, sorry, you may, you may have email network, which is part of the network, vulnerability, and T1, you may have viruses, and then for countermeasure, you may, you may have a virus, antivirus program, sorry, antivirus program, or for hacking, you may have firewall, things like that. So at the end, uh, the residual risks are here on that branches where lack of countermeasure sits. And you add them up, you find your total residual risk. OK, now the, all these, uh, there are laws that uh, are here consistently applied. You, the sum of vulnerabilities have to add up to one. Some of, some of threats for each vulnerability have to add up to one. It's, a, it's like an exhaustive s s style of uh, forming this tree diagram. And the sum of lack of countermeasure and countermeasure add up to one. Now, I just want to go ahead with an example uh, that was uh, centered around Northern Virginia Regional Computer Center for an $8,000 asset. Uh, that's also a paper that was published, and I gave you that paper. It's in front of you. If you want to look at it, please, uh, the IEEE paper. Uh, the uh, very first initials were done in the, another paper on privacy security. You have that, and then this one, last one is 2008. Now, what happened is this uh, student uh, who was a, a PhD student, uh, she collected in a different university uh, in the north, collected all these uh, surveys on countermeasures. So these are all countermeasures uh, results on the right. And then she collected also, uh, obviously I can't do <laughs> my, uh, my laser, but uh, uh, you can see it's on the right side. And then next, uh, she collected uh, all the information on T, threat. Uh, what I did, I classified them as a threat. And, you know, uh, late, and, and lastly, the, your vulnerabilities. So, and there's something called, uh, something called uh, criticality. Now, criticality is if it's like a nuclear power plant, your criticality is 100%. If it's something less than that, there are degrees. But in this work, we, put, we took 0.4, but in the demo, I'll take it 100% uh, needed, critical, for uh, sake of convenience. So you can see that when, after the survey, all the data available, I can put all the stuff here in the, in, in the um, security meter char, uh, spreadsheet. And that way, I have all these uh, values found by a survey, right? So, and uh, before I go and do the study with you, how to do the, how to crunch uh, the security machine, meter machine, and how to get the results, I want to work on a little bit on game theory, because game theory is going to be essential in this study on how to optimize, how to uh, optimize my, uh, existing system to a new system so that I can get the optimal uh, 